I'm Whitney Tilson. I hope you enjoy this video. If you'd like to learn more about case learning and our programs, just go to caselearning.com. And if you have any questions, just email me at info at caselearning.com. And so what do you read? Um, you know, uh, magazines, newspapers, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I do a ton of reading. Uh, I don't know whether I do more reading or writing. I, I'd say probably a lot more uh, writing, uh, excuse me, reading. You know, I read constantly. Um, I don't write constantly. Um, but um, let's see. Um, I would say just sort of my core reading of what's going on in the world uh, is the New York Times. Um, I try and get to the Wall Street Journal every day as well. Uh, sometimes I only have a chance to skim it. That's sort of the core business uh, investing world. Um, and then I subscribe to a bunch of different stuff, um, you know, updates from pretty much the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal. So that just sort of gives me my updates on breaking news, etc. Um, and some of those, um, uh, you know, have links to stuff outside of the publications. Um, a guy named Barry Ritholt, R-I-T-H-O-L, TZ, I believe. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Barry Ritholtz um, publishes sort of a daily thing for the investment community that just has a lot of good links. Um, let me see if I can uh, find it here and, and get the spelling right for you. Bear with me just a second. Waiting through a lot of emails here for my birthday. It's uh, I'm 52 today. Yay. Um, so, oh, um, Fortune has something called the Fortune CEO Daily. If you just Google, Google Fortune CEO Daily, I'm sure you can subscribe in two milliseconds. Um, 538.com has a newsletter. Just, just type in 538, spell it out, 538 space newsletter. Um, um, that's interesting. Um, hold on just a second. There are a couple different Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, New York Times. If you just go to their websites, they have these things, you know, today's opinions, um, first reads uh, on politics, um, uh, Wall Street Journal market alert, Wall Street Journal what's news. Um, so there are probably a dozen of these that I get every morning. Um, and then uh, I'm just trying to find the name of Barry Ritholtz. Um, you know what? Let me see if I can uh, if I can pull it up here in. Um, uh, I can pull it up here on my computer if you guys just bear with me just a second, because I do find he has a good nose for pretty interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, Bar Barry Ritholtz, R-I-T-H-O-L-T-Z, and he's a Bloomberg writer, um, and it's called Ritholtz's Reads, and you know what? I'm uh, forwarding it to you guys. Um, I just forwarded it to you, so you'll see um, uh, today's version of it. Um, and it's just a bunch of bullet points um, with links to other articles uh, on Bloomberg, but elsewhere. Uh, so I find that pretty useful. Um, okay, so that's the day-to-day -day reading that comes in via email that I'm reading on my computer. And then uh, on top of that, my other reading is books. Um, and I don't read it books anymore. Uh, almost never. Um, I listen to them on Audible. So here's my Audible on my phone. Um, and I'd say my books, um, so I'm basically what I do is, is any time that I can read on my phone, on my computer, etc., I'm reading. But there are certain times when I can't read. Um, when I'm walking in city streets and I don't want to uh, smash into anyone or anything. Uh, when I'm exercising and when I'm driving and when I'm riding my bike around the city, which is how I get around the city. So at those points, when I can't be reading, um, I have a couple different earpieces. This is a Bose uh, earpiece right here um, that is uh, that pops in my ear like this. And I usually only put it in one ear um, when I'm riding my bike, for example. Got to keep the other ear clear to, to hear what's going on um, uh, or when I'm walking around. Uh, when I'm exercising, I have a pair of sport headphones like this, again, that, that go over my ear, but I can hear, but I can also, uh, so these are my exercise headphones. Um, and then, <laughs> you're going to laugh. This is really digressing, I suppose, but what the heck. Um, the very best earpiece I've found for talking um, 
is this one right here. It's the Plantronics uh, Pro or something like that that has the little boom microphone. Um, so it's very good for talking um, and it has good sound quality and good sound cancellation, um, but it is not so good uh, just for listening to music or audio books or anything like that because it doesn't, this doesn't really rest deep enough in the ear and the volume doesn't go up high enough. So it's sort of funny, sometimes you'll see me um, and I have this in one ear and then I have the bows in the other ear. And so if I'm listening to a book uh, on Audible or a podcast or something like that, I'm listening in here and then a phone call comes in and I turn this on and I talk to somebody over here, I turn this off and back to my book over here. Um, it's a little insane, I'll admit, but uh, it works for me. I hate, hate, hate wasted time. Um, and so, you know, when I'm driving in my car or when I'm jogging around the reservoir yesterday, I'm training for the world's toughest mutter, which is in nine days, I'm running a 24 hour endurance race. So, you know, I'm doing a fair amount of athletic training out there. Um, I'm catching up and listening to great books. So uh, let me just finish this long digression with, uh, I'm sort of flipping through, I probably read one book a week, listening via Audible. Um, one of the key things I've done is I've trained myself to listen at two and a half X speed. Um, so uh, I also watch YouTube videos. Um, um, I love Trevor Noah, Samantha B, Seth Meyers, Stephen Colbert, and John Oliver. Uh, and Jimmy Kimmel to some extent. The late night comedians uh, crack me up. I get a lot of information and uh, entertainment from watching them, uh, but I watch them at double speed on YouTube. Um, there's a setting in YouTube, both on your phone and on your computer, where you can speed things up, uh, up to 1.25, 1.5, or 2x. So I've trained myself to listen at high speed, both on YouTube, um, and I go up to two and a half X speed uh, here on Audible. So uh, what are the things, uh, you know, my, the books that I read um, fall into a few general categories. Um, I, I'm sort of a political junkie, so I read all of the books, uh, you know, um, um, written about sort of the Trump administration and stuff like that. Um, uh, Michael Lewis just came out with an interesting book. Uh, he's mostly an investment writer, but he just came out with a book about the Trump administration called The Fifth Risk that hasn't gotten uh, a lot of attention. Um, I love reading books about investing, just interesting things going on in the investing world or interesting companies. One of the most interesting books I read, re listened to recently was The Billion Dollar Whale about this Malaysian guy named Joe Lowe who uh, created this one MDB scam that's, uh, that's uh, basically he looted the, uh, um, the Malaysian government of a few billion dollars and spent it all partying. Um, it's a wild story. Um, I love books about sort of um, statistical analysis, freakonomics, uh, thinking fast and slow. Um, um, uh, um, what's the book, Glenn? Um, that talks about uh, super forecasting. Um, that was a heck of a book. Um, so uh, I also love just sort of adventure books. Um, you know, Alex Honnold's book about rock climbing, a guy who survived 430 days on the ocean, uh, all the Navy SEAL books written by former Navy SEALs. Um, let's see, um, books about sort of psychology, authentic happiness, uh, books about marriage, stuff like that. Uh, there's a very interesting book about uh, called Feeling Good, one of the classics of, you know, how to maintain a positive outlook, overcome depression. Um, let's see, uh, very interested in books related to um, what's going on in, you know, rural America, um, book called uh, Janesville, um, uh, another book called Strangers in Their Own Land, uh, the classic book, uh, uh, in this uh, genre was called, um, uh, hold on just a second, uh, it was called, um, gosh, I'm having such a senior moment here, um, um, but it was, it was the, it was the classic book about the guy who grew up po uh, poor, and um, does anyone remember, um, um, Uh, one or more clues? Oh, it's it, it was the it was the absolute bestseller um, about uh, about the guy who grew up super poor in like Ohio from a West Virginia sort of redneck family ended up going to Yale Law School. Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance. Thank you. 
Uh, I read it so long ago and I read so many books, it's buried deep in here. Um, so, uh, you know, there's just a whole collection of books. By the way, one of the books I just super enjoyed was uh, Trevor Noah's books um, about growing up uh, as a mixed, mixed race kid uh, in South Africa, initially under apartheid and then afterward. Um, so anyone who's interested, you know, I could, I could send you, uh, you know, I read 50 books a year, about one a week. Um, so um, also just interesting books about companies and industries. So a book about beer money, about, uh, the, the, remember Stroh's beer? Um, one of the children of the Stroh family, Francis Stroh, talked about growing up in that beer family um, and then how the family screwed it all up and basically you know, went to zero. Um, I read a book recently called The Meat, uh, about the meat industry, the, the processed food industry in this country. Um, uh, um, you know, so uh, another super interesting book, Everybody Lies about Google and big data and what you can learn from that. A book called Digital Gold about Bitcoin and the history of Bitcoin. Um, you know, there's so many interesting investment books out there. Scott Galloway's book, The Four, uh, about Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook. Um, uh, so I could go on, I could go on, you know, literally dozens and dozens and dozens of books here. Um, and there's so many good ones. Uh, so I just have a big open account on Audible. Anytime I hear a story, I read something, or someone tells me about an interesting book, uh, I just download it onto Audible, archive it, and um, uh, eventually I get to it. Any, uh, sorry for going on so long, but, um, but, but um, you know, becoming a learning machine is really important uh, to becoming not only a successful investor, but a successful human being. And I would argue you don't want to limit your learning just to investing, that being broad-minded and, and understanding, you know, what's going on in the world and understanding politics and, you know, trade wars and so forth. Some of it relates to investing, some of it's just being a functioning, well-educated human being. So reading, um, finding things that you're really interested in, not just about investing, obviously starting there, um, and then, you know, becoming a learning machine, both learning from other people. If you live in New York, obviously, there are lots of events and things you can go to in person, uh, cultivating the right group of friends to learn from. But most of your learning, you, you know, you got to do on your own just every day, the habit of reading and what you're reading. Um, and, uh, you know, just getting on that super steep uh, learning curve. Um, will uh, in many ways determine, you know, that's what grows your mind and your mind is your biggest asset uh, for almost all of us. Um, so other investment newsletters uh, somebody asked me about, I really don't um, uh, pay for that many. I've been a reader of Fred Hickey's High Tech Strategist for 20 years. He's sort of a perma bear, um, but he, uh, you know, he loves gold and has been hating tech for a while. Um, but I find his perspectives pretty insightful um, and interesting. Uh, yeah, you can just Google Fred Hickey, H-I-C-K-E-Y. It's called the High Tech Strategist. Um, and, uh, and so uh, Haroon asked if I could send a uh, list of books on good business um, and uh, investment stories. Uh, I will do that um, uh, after the call uh, some point today. Um, and somebody asked, do, uh, Luis says, do we have Goodreads accounts? Um, I don't. Uh, so uh, Luis, if you want to uh, type up something, shoot me an email or something about uh, Goodreads and why you recommend it and what its advantages are, I'm happy to circulate to the group. Anyone else have any um, questions, thoughts, um, you know, related to learning and what they read and what their techniques are? Um, you know, I probably more than anyone else I know um, have developed systems such that there's almost never a gap. Like I'm sitting here reading on a big screen, you know, at home. Then when I'm not at the big screen, I have the largest screen with the highest clarity of a Samsung Note 9, right? So I can read as, as well as I possibly can, uh, given my decaying eyes, um, you know, when I'm on a smaller device. And then anytime I can't be reading, um, uh, I've, um, uh, I've got uh, various earpieces and so forth. So, you know, I'm listening to my favorite YouTube stuff and or my favorite books on Audible. Um, you know, recently I've been listening to Tony Robbins, one of his things. Uh, I think he's a pretty interesting guy, has some interesting things to say. So, 
Um, so it's, uh, and I've developed a way, I'm a speed reader and I'm a speed listener. So not only am I using every available minute um, to be learning uh, and reading, uh, either by reading or listening, but then I'm, I'm doubling the rate of what most people are consuming information at. Uh, so it's like a, a, a double benefit. I'm Whitney Tilson. I hope you enjoy this video. If you'd like to learn more about case learning and our programs, just go to caselearning.com. And if you have any questions, just email me at info at caselearning.com.